Welcome back to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. We'll be coming to you live from the second day of the Singapore FinTech Festival. And joining me for the segment, we have Orpong Tian Yen. He's the president of CM Commercial Bank. We're going to discuss blockchain for procurement to pay and some other digital ventures. Orpong, thanks so much for joining us at the FinTech Festival. Now, blockchain for procure to pay and banking as a platform strategy, a lot of it has been bank profits have been stagnant. And the return on equity, um, as well as discounted price to, to book ratios, how do banks break through and get involved with these new opportunities? We, as one of the largest banks in Thailand, see the same trend that you're saying, that the profit is stagnant. So even if we're investing more into the existing services, it hasn't resulted in higher profit. And if you look back in the last five years, the profit pool of large banks in Thailand is stagnant. It's about 6.5 billion US dollar per year, and it hasn't grown, despite how much money we put into trying to innovate existing services. Therefore, we get to a realization that to change the picture, the bank need to look at different business models. And one of the business models that we explore is bank as a platform. Because if you look at the bank as it is today, we're becoming more and less and less relevant to our customer. In the past, if you have cash, you want to earn interest, you come to a bank. If you want to start a business, you come to a bank. Today, you have choice of buying mutual funds, you have choices of going to VC. So how could bank transform? So we pick the area of supply chain management, which is one of the largest area of trades. And we look at blockchain as a promising technology. Because blockchain, many people believe that it will change the world, might be even more than the internet has changed the world today. And we can easily imagine that conducting trades, uh, creating contracts, can be as easy as sending email or easy as chatting today. Yeah, I mean, it certainly makes it more seamless, but I would imagine it, when you look at banking as a platform, it also allows you to develop that ecosystem where you were saying before, it's not simply you come to your bank, you know, put cash and deposit it and you go on your way, where it really can become an ecosystem for, for everything that you do for your business, not just holding money. Right, yeah. right. And that's our intent. You look at how it works, right? Today, in supply chain trade, you have multiple parties, you have buyers, you have a lot of suppliers, you have banks that uh, facilitate payment and provide uh, liquidity services, and you also have the government. All of these in generate a lot of documents, need to verify a lot of documents, and need to process a lot of documents. Okay? But with blockchain, which is a distributed ledger technology, what we're able to do is be able to integrate all of these documents right. without going to point-to-point -point integration as it is or as it has been in the past. By doing that, we're able to automate the whole processes. We have piloted this with our first customer since August 2018. And our first benchmark of this customer, they save about 50% of time and 70% of the cost. We show that this is truly a promising technology. Right, and that's how you build up that ROE and, and the rest of the metrics. So tell us about digital ventures and blockchain procure to pay services. Okay. Um, digital ventures is a subsidiary of some commercial bank. Uh, the, our bank recognized that we cannot grow revenue in the existing business model. So what we do is we create a pro program called Venture Builder Program. We um, recruit, we entice entrepreneur to work with the bank, with funding from the bank. Up to a certain point when this group show promising results, we spin them out. So Digital Ventures is the first graduate of our Venture Builder Program. We at the point that by January 1st, we spin it out as a startup company. That's amazing. Let's start up here, and how are you building this global network through different partnerships? Yeah, the, the, the success of the blockchain depends on the size of the network. So we, as a bank, have piloted this. We have seen significant benefits to all parties. Right? Buyers used to take two to three weeks to go through the approval invoices. 
now can be done in one day. Suppliers used to have to wait for the invoices to take it to banks for invoice financing. Now that again can happen in one day. And bank one, we gain the period of financing, right? two to three weeks longer than what it was. And as a bank, we also be able to acquire a lot of suppliers. Um, first year took us about a year to onboard 100 suppliers. Now we're running at the pace of 100 suppliers per week. Oh, wow. Yep. So the scaling is, is getting there. Right? But it needs to be a lot higher than that to be successful. Mm -hmm. So now we try to replicate this success into other countries. Right? Once you have banks in other countries, we can see that we, we can truly disrupt the supply chain trades. Right? Today, if you have cross-border trading, mm -hmm. you have to um, just in addition to the, the contract between buyers and suppliers, you have a lot of agencies involved, involvement. Right? You have custom, you have health, you have all kinds of licenses. Just imagine that all of these documents can be connected online easily without having to go through complex system integration through blockchain. Okay? The world could change. You can even question why you need customs. Can banks on both ends perform the function of verifying the identity of the traders? Can banks verify that the trades is actually real? Can banks be the agent for all the licenses? Yeah, that's amazing thinking about the bank as a supply chain and logistics and distribution system. Right. It's incredible. Thank you so much for joining right. us in the FinTech Thank Festival. you for the opportunity. And thank you for joining me on Trade Talks. I'm Michelle Malandrino, Global Marketing Reporter at NASDAQ. Thank you.